Roshan Pujari is the founder and CEO of Stardust Power, a sustainable American developer of battery-grade lithium resources. Now, in addition to Stardust Power, Pujari has over 20 years of analysis and deal-making experience as a founder and CEO of Bacasa Capital, where he oversaw the firm's energy transition business. Pujari is also a philanthropist, founding the Pujari Foundation, serving to promote the interests of art, culture, and community around the globe. So welcome, and let's talk about Stardust Power. Um, tell us how you got started. What made you decide to look at the lithium industry? Great, well, mm -hmm. first of all, thank you, Jane, for having me on Innovators today. Mm -hmm. It's an honor to be here and speak with you. Um, I looked at, we started looking at the lithium space at Vicasa Capital in around 2018. We wound up taking a large position in a big industrial metals complex. And from there, we really learned the space. The ability to do technical due diligence, to create an ecosystem focused on specifically American lithium brine assets. It's there where I started working with co-founder and chief technical officer Pablo Cortegoso while he was working as SRK as an advisor. And what we saw is that there is a lot of lithium in the United States, potentially the fourth largest reserves in the world. There is a lot of investment going into lithium assets from an upstream perspective. However, the critical gap in the supply chain is refining capacity, which China controls. So hence, we founded an independent company, Stardust Power, to fill that gap focusing on our large central refinery. Interesting, okay, I didn't know that was like the missing piece in the supply chain, so when it's a very important one. Now, what led the decision to eventually go public? So you'll be doing this through a merger with Global Partner Acquisition Corp. Um, do you have like a timetable, milestones, and when that will happen? Sure, so mm -hmm. you know, first we thought it was ideal to be a public company at this stage in our journey. One, to make available to ourselves capital markets financing. It is a large CapEx project, approximately $1.2 billion. So being able to diversify our sources of finance. And second, maybe most importantly, we saw it as an opportunity to aggregate supply upstream for a vertically integrated approach. As we've seen junior miners like to do all stock deals and leveraging an earnout structure based on milestones, we found an efficient way to aggregate supply sources upstream and vertically integrate our company. Even just the announcement of our merger deal um, showed, that the, showed that to be successful as we now control over 35,000 acres of resource. So to be a public company was important and to find the right partner was very important. So we really like GPAC2 and their sponsor team, which is the underlying owner is Antarctica Capital, a $3.5 billion private equity alternative asset manager based here in New York City, founded by and Chandra Patel, who also serves as the CEO. And not only is the sponsor team really effective and adds value during the combination, but post as a public company, but their SPAC was also a very efficient vehicle, only one six warrant coverage, uh, no IPO investment banking. So with the sponsor and the vehicle, it proved to be an ideal match. Yeah. What role do you see Stardust Power playing in America's transition as we move to less reliance on fossil fuels, more to renewables? So this phase of global electrification is dependent on lithium and other critical materials. So the onshoring of manufacturing of these critical materials is a national security priority. So as a manufacturer of battery grade lithium products, we see Stardust Power as essential to America and the global energy transition. But another facet of our business proves to be very important as building a large central refinery that's optimized for multiple sources of input, not only do we unlock the midstream manufacturing ability, but we unlock the upstream potential of the US where now multiple sources can be developed, some that might not be large enough to create their own refinery, mm -hmm. so we can work with multiple suppliers, encouraging a resilient American supply chain. Interesting. Um, what kind of technology will you use or innovative processes will you use? Yeah, so <laughs> you know, we have a good balance of being innovative as well as limiting technology risk by working with proven and established technology. 
So for our midstream refinery, we're using proven and established chemical conversion technology that's off the shelf. So we're taking very limited technology risk. From an upstream perspective, um, we are using DLE as sourcing for our feedstock, which has a better environmental footprint than evaporation ponds, which you might see in South America or other places. And so to limit the risk of direct lithium extraction, we are working with best in class DLE providers, matching their technology with the chemistry of the asset to limit any risk on direct lithium extraction. What about job creation, economic growth? I understand your refinery is in Oklahoma. Um, so what about the local community? How will that contribute to the economic growth of that? Yeah, area? thank you for asking. Um, we selected our site in Port Muskogee, Oklahoma. Um, it's an excellent site. The shovel ready site is already connected to major highway, major rail, and sits on the largest inland waterway system in the United States, ideal for our hub and spoke model. Um, we'll create over 500 jobs. The $1.2 billion capex, I am told, is the largest private investment in the a private development in the history of Oklahoma. So we have been working hand in hand with the community le leaders and the community at large who are very excited about this job creation. You know, Oklahoma is, is rich in skilled workforce and oil and gas engineers that can be trained for lithium uh, refining. So when we talk about the energy transition and creating the jobs of the future, this is an ideal situation. We have received an analysis by the Department of Commerce of up to $257 million in incentives to develop our facility in Oklahoma. Yeah, interesting. And of course, sustainability, big issue when it comes to mining especially. Uh, what are your plans to navigate that? Sure, so sustainability is built into each step of our process. From our choice of lithium brine assets over hard rock, which has a larger environmental and footprint, uh, carbon footprint, hard rock does. So we're using brine assets and we're using DLE technology from an upstream perspective. So we're not using evaporation ponds, which might contaminate uh, local groundwater supplies. So our choice of feedstock is important. Mm -hmm. Second is in engineering our midstream facility, they're designed as all electric lines, even in the burner no kilns, so really um, producing no emission from that. Also, we are using zero liquid discharge technology, so we will not create liquid discharge that could be polluting municipal water systems or rivers. Our largest byproduct is largely a, a salt similar to a road salt. Also, Oklahoma is blessed with a lot of sustainable power on the grid. On average, the grid is 70% sustainable from sources like wind and solar. So solar. Mm -hmm. um, so we really choose sustainability at every point in our process. Yeah. Um, what is the U.S. doing in terms of support for companies like yours? Are there particular policies that have either been implemented or in the process of being implemented that could help? So the United States recognizes the national security priority of onshoring resilient American supply chains, um, given that lithium and lithium ion batteries are critical to the energy transition and China dominates the space. Some say up to 66% of the global market, but up to 85% of the global refining capacity. So that means a majority of lithium, no matter where it's found, is being sent to China to be manufactured into battery grade products. Given rising geopolitical tensions and the ability for China to cut off, potentially cut off these supplies, it's important we do this in the United States. So the US government has been very thoughtful in encouraging these. Uh, for example, the bipartisan infrastructure law, the DOE BIL is a $3.5 billion grant being administered currently with a focus on lithium uh, refinement. Also, the DOD LPO ATVM, a lot of acronyms, but it is a loan. <laughs> Good job remembering all of them. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it is a, a financing facility for the construction of large infrastructure projects. Also, the Defense Department has got involved with the Defense Production Act, which can invest upstream for raw material. 
Um, so lots of opportunities for the federal government. And at Stardust Power, we seek to avail ourselves of all of these opportunities. Yeah, so I was going to ask, like, we know what the government's doing. Is there anything Stardust is doing in particular to mitigate the geopolitical risks? Yes, by we're sourcing everything that we can from the U.S. or IRA or FTA compliant. So from our feedstock, from our technology partners, uh, we are making sure that it is all IRA compliant. And our focus, not only from a construction and a sourcing perspective, but also downstream, as we'll seek to encourage domestic cathode producers uh, by selling them a portion of our products as well. Now, for potential investors that might be looking into this space, I mean, why should they look into it from kind of a macro point of view and then also from Stardust's point of view? From a macro perspective, the, the projected demand of lithium is skyrocketing as the critical component of lithium ion batteries and the electric vehicle transition. Uh, we see a lot of demand and not much production. Only 20,000 tons of battery grade lithium products is produced in the United States currently, which is not nearly enough. As more EV cars are sold, more handheld electronics are sold, lithium is important, and we see those continue to rise. Um, the, from an investor perspective, we see this as an excellent opportunity because of the availability of non-dilutive capital to build our facility. So out of the $1.2 billion, we, we seek to finance most of it, if not mainly all of it, from non-dilutive capital sources, such as bank financing, government grants, as well as prepayment facilities uh, by our potential off-taker. So the value proposition for investors at this stage is substantial. Yeah, Roshan, thank you so much for coming and talking about Stardust Power. Thank you, Jane, for having me. It's wonderful to be with you today.